Hey, how's it going? And today I'm going to show you how to create a teleportation effect or functionality using just the verse code. And this allows you greater freedom as far as creating effects and things like that. And this is with a the Fortnite character. So what we have looks like this. If I go into Fortnite, I have a trigger device right there. And as soon as I cross it, I'm going to teleport into a different region of the game. So I go across, but notice it's not a teleportation device, it's a trigger device. And of course this ability to move anywhere in the game with my character, I could use any other trigger. I, I'm using a trigger device, but I could also trigger it with anything else as well. So anyway, there's just a few things involved with this, not too much, and I'll be back in just a minute to get started. Okay, I'm back, and to get started with this, we are just going to... Well, the first thing I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to copy this code that I have written already. Copy that. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to start fresh to go from the very beginning, and we'll go continue to load. And we can use a blank project and it just takes a minute to load up and then I'll go over the code with you so that loaded up pretty quick first we'll create a verse device so we'll come up here and go to my project left click right click add it we leave it called I'll give it a new name so I don't conflict with other things I've created already and I'll just call it teleporter and go create and then it's going to come up over here, double click into here, and we'll make this full screen. I'll hit Control A, Delete, and Control V. And here's our code. These are just our modules here. This creates our, hell, our, our device here. And then we've created a trigger. There's a couple things here that are a little different. So we're creating a vector three variable and this is how you set it up. The thing that's interesting is you use the curly brackets and you use what I call the walrus operators or inference operators here, which infer the type of variable. So it's the variable name, it's a vector three type, it's a vector three type, curly brackets, and then the X, Y, and Z, and those are all float values there with the walrus operator. Now this location, is just random but how you could get your location where you wanted to let's say your character to be or teleport to well we have two spawning devices here if i grab one of them here let's just say i just move this off here somewhere this could be any object in the scene i'm just using this one but let's say that's so you'll notice that's its location right there I'll maybe move it this way too. It doesn't really matter where you move it, it's just wherever you want the person to spawn in at. Let's say that's where I want them to spawn, up in the air. I would just go copy, and then let me go back into the code here. And I could paste right here. And I just have to fix a few things to make it compatible. So, but I have those three values there. So we put the colon there to make it a walrus operator. And, and then a curly bracket at the end. And that's our new location. So you could just manually input a location or you could grab a location some other way, but that's how I'm just doing it manually, hard coding it in. And then I'm just creating a trigger, an editable trigger. So we have to put a trigger device in the scene. Here we're just creating a, using my trigger, the triggered event that's contained within, the method contained within this trigger device. And we, we're calling, we use subscribe to call our custom function that we've written here. And because this is a trigger event, the, the function requires the agent as a parameter so that's the agent and then that's an optional there void it doesn't return anything and then these four lines of code 
essentially access our Fortnite player character here. And I'm just calling it ultimately mine one. And then here, using, if we click here on Fort character, if I hit control and left click, you can see all the things we can do with the Fort character. And that's all we're doing is you can see we have the teleport to here. And then we also can get its essentially its location because it's saying returns the rotation where the Fortnite character is looking, returns the location where this Fortnite character is looking. So basically where they're standing. So we can use those values and kind of, we can use this to set our rotation. So if I come back in here and we have our first four lines, you see that I call mine one here, get view location, and I assign it to player position. And I just want to, I'm just doing that so that I can see it. So, and I'm printing out a string. I just want to see in 3D space where my player character is in terms of X, Y, and Z values. That's all this is doing. I was just curious to see where, where it is. And then new rotation, I'm, I'm getting the view rotation and I'm using that to set the teleport to because it requires the vector three and a rotation variable or constant. So we've got our if, and this is tricky. This is one of the things that's tricky about verse language is that if we come down here, you'll see it has this thing, and this is, I think this is fairly unique to verse, is it has what's called the decides specifier. And this is what they consider to be what they call a fallible expression. And as such, that means that if you're going to call this method within the Fort character class, you have to put it within an if statement. And in addition to that, it also has to be, the parameters have to be enclosed in brackets. So basically it's saying if this doesn't happen, this doesn't line up, then it fails. So they do this as a fail-safe mechanism to prevent crashes at runtime. But what that means for you on the coding level is that if you're going to call a method or function that has a decide specifier, you have to put it within an if statement and then you have to put it the parameters within brackets. And that's just the rules of the verse game that they've created. That I think is unique to verse. And this is just a, a print string here. So anyway, that's all the code. I'll just leave it on the screen. And hopefully it'll work <laughs> So when I run it. So I'll minimize that. Now, the only other thing we need to do is get a trigger device. So let me get a trigger device here. Search for it. I'll just drag this on the scene right there. And then I'll go ahead and build my verse code. I don't get any errors. And then, of course, I've got to drag my verse device into the scene to make it work. And then I just need to pair up my trigger. And if I did everything right, when I go across the trigger, I'll teleport up there into the sky near where this player spawner is. So I can actually delete that player spawner. Which one is that? I can actually delete that. I just needed it to get its location. And that's it. So I'll go ahead and launch the session and then we'll be back and see if this works. Okay, we're back and it looks like we're ready to test this. So I'll go start, see what happens. Okay, so there's our trigger device. And if everything goes well, I should teleport into the sky. So let's see if that's what happens. Yep, that's how it works. So essentially this allows you to create your own teleportation device. So I'm triggering this with a trigger, but this could then be triggered with anything, with a button or a pop-up question device or any number of things. So this allows you to go a little deeper and have a little bit more control over where your Fortnite character appears in the game. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Take care, have a great day, and I will talk to you next time.